good morning and this is uh, physics for answer is demystified uh, the lecture for today is on anesthesia breathing system and this is first part of the lecture and in this lecture we are going to talk about the components of uh, anesthesia breathing systems and how to draw them for the exams the commonest breathing system used by most uh, nowadays is circle system so first we're going to discuss about circle system. The most important component of a circle system is the solar line. The solar line uh, consists of calcium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, uh, potassium hydroxide, uh, which is not used in new solar lines because it's very caustic. Uh, silicates was used in the older solar line, not in the new ones. It obviously has got water, uh, with the content of which can vary from 14 to 20 percent. The granule size is around 48 uh, mesh uh, size. It's important to know what reaction occurs in the solar line when carbon dioxide comes in contact with solar line. Uh, carbon dioxide reacts with the sodium hydroxide uh, to produce sodium carbonate, uh, water and heat. And this uh, reaction is very important for uh, the heating and humidifying the uh, gases that pass through the solar line. Uh, sodium carbonate can again react with calcium hydroxide to produce sodium hydroxide and calcium carbonate. Whilst this reaction is important for the humidification and heating up of the gases, the carbon dioxide also reacts with the water to produce uh, hydrogen ions and bicarb. And it is this acid that uh, changes the color of the indicator. Calcium hydroxide can also react with the hydrogen ions and bicarb ions uh, to produce calcium uh, carbonate and more water. Uh, this is a solar lamp canister uh, which shows the uh, indicator converting to purple, white to purple. So that is the exhausted solar lamp and this is the normal solar lamp. There are various indicators and it's important which indicator is uh, present in the solar line uh, which you are using. Uh, some of the solar lines they are deep pink in color and, and they become off-white and once they get exhausted the indicators in these are Clayton yellow and Tartan yellow. Whereas the, there are other solar lines which are white uh, normally and the indicator in that could be ethyl violet, which converts to purple on exhaustion, or phenolphthalein, which converts from white to pink when it's exhausted. There are newer uh, sort of limes or sort of lime substitutes, and some of them with these are low flow sorb, uh, spirosorb, which contains uh, zeolite, and there's M sorb plus, which uh, does not have any hydroxides, it only has uh, 3%. Uh, calcium chloride. So if you look at the uh, circle system, uh, circle system is a circle. And the one way valve with the side, which is the inspirator limb and the expirator limb. Uh, so this is uh, the inspirator limb. The gases will flow from the machine to the patient. And this is the expirator limb where the gases will flow from the patient to the sort of line. It is uh, obviously attached to the patient and the most important component of circle system is a sort of line. So this is uh, the normal configuration. These will not change. Uh, next comes the APL valve. Where should it be? The ideal position uh, for APL valve is in the expertise side uh, because the gases uh, uh, need to be vented out. These are the expired gases. And these gases, once they flow through the solar line, the carbon dioxide is uh, absorbed and the volatile anesthetic agents are recycled. And you get this uh, warm, humidified gases. And uh, these will be collected in the reservoir bag. And the fresh gas flow need to be added to the, uh, the uh, inspirator limb. Uh, which will actually flow to the patient. Reservoir bag uh, 
need to be in spread limb because it provides the peak in spready flow. So this is the ideal configuration of a circle system. The other breathing systems are classified by Mapleson as all of us know from A to F or but uh, Miller has uh, reclassified them into uh, afferent reservoir system, junction reservoir system and efferent reservoir systems. So we're looking at the first of the Mapleson classification, uh, the breathing system. Uh, this one is the uh, Magels uh, breathing system or Mapleson A. Uh, this has got a large uh, breathing tubing uh, which has a capacity of 450 ml and a length of 110 centimeters. Mapleson uh, classification of this breathing system is A, uh, but uh, Miller classified it into uh, afferent reservoir system. Uh, let's look at why he called this an afferent reservoir system. Uh, so you have the corrugate tubing, uh, you have the face mask, APL valve, a reservoir bag and the fresh gas flows. So if you look at the reservoir bag, the reservoir bag actually is very near to the fresh gas flow. So where the fresh gas flows come in, this is the afferent limb. It's just like afferent arterial where the blood flows in. When the blood flows out, it's called the efferent limb. So if you look at uh, it now, uh, this part is within the red. Uh, square or the rectangle is the afferent limb where the fresh gas flows are coming in and since the reservoir system is very near or within the afferent limb this is not the afferent reservoir system where the gases are vented out that becomes the afferent limb the next uh, system are uh, Mapleson uh, B and C and uh, this is Mapleson C we uh, don't have a diagram or picture of Mapleson B and this is a disposable kit and this is a one uh, which is uh, indigenously made so you can actually see the reservoir bag and the this is the fresh gas flow coming in APL valve and you uh, got the uh, patient patient and uh, this is the face mask So if you look at these breathing systems, uh, the one I've just shown, if you add a soda lime canister to it, it becomes a water circuit. That's what we call them. Uh, but it only becomes a water circuit if it has got a water canister. This is a soda lime canister or water canister. Okay. So B and C are called junction reservoir system. Why are they called uh, junction reservoir system? Where is the junction? Okay, so we got the corrugate tubing, uh, we got the uh, patient end, uh, and we got APL valve, and um, we got the reservoir system. Okay, and the fresh gas flow. Okay, that's the if that's the junction. Okay. So if you look at the breathing system, the reservoir bag, the reservoir bag is like lying at the junction of the afferent and the efferent flows. So where the gases come in, that's the fresh gas flows coming in and that's the vented out. They're, they're almost uh, near to each other. And I'll show them in a, in a different configuration which will make, make it uh, much more clearer. Okay, if you look at this, uh, this is uh, and uh, the fresh gas flow coming in and this is the expired gases and the reservoir bag lies as a junction here so that's where it is so in b it is connected by a corrugated tubing uh, whereas in c there is no corrugated tubing so uh, miller classified b and c mapleton b and c into junction reservoir system the next breathing system is the uh, mapleton d and uh, this is uh, example of a Coaxial uh, Mapleson D, uh, also known as Bain system. Uh, Bain system uh, has got a tubing which is uh, of 180, sorry, 180 centimeters. Uh, the outer tubing has a diameter of 22 millimeters and inner of 40 millimeters. Uh, the capacity of the outer tubing is uh, 450 mLs again. 
and this is Mapleton F uh, which is uh, a Jackson Reese modification of E or Air's uh, brain system and uh, they becomes a modification because we have got an open-ended bag attached to the uh, the X-bar limb so uh, Miller reclassified Mapleton D, E and F as Efren reservoir systems because the reservoir system is in the Efren limb okay so if you look at the Mapleton D so we got the uh, corrugate tubing we got the face mask we got the fresh gas flows fresh gas flows in the system is very very close to the patient end and the uh, expertly port lies or the reservoir lies in the expertly side of the system so uh, E is the uh, air TPs and D uh, is the Bain system which is a coaxial system of D and then you have Jackson Reese modification which has an open ended back uh, so here the reservoir system is uh, lying in the afferent, so efferent, so not the afferent, the efferent limb. Uh, this is where the gases flow out. Okay, so this is the efferent side. Uh, this is where the gases come in. Okay, so they're still near to the patient. Okay, and so this is the afferent limb. And that's why uh, D and F uh, are the efferent reservoir system uh, as per the Miller classification. Uh, in the next lecture, I'm going to talk about the function analysis, uh, how the gases flow uh, during the various stages of the uh, breathing system uh, or the respiration in various breathing systems and uh, why uh, some gas, uh, the minimum, what do you call the fresh gas flows or what are the fresh gas flows re required to prevent uh, rebreathing uh, in various uh, uh, breathing system will be uh, discussed in the next lecture. Uh, thank you very much for uh, watching this video and listening to this lecture. See you in the lex uh, lecture on functional analysis of breathing systems.